Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and right now, we have actually just went ahead and finished off the Siberian strategy focus. If we're to turn our army back to the liberation of our homeland, then we must devise a strategy on how to go about this. While conflict in Mongolia is focused on mobility, in Russia, we find that it will be armor and the power of mechanized assault that will win us back to the helm of the motherland. With our industry developing, we will know that there is still a long way to go before the industrial power of the Western Mongolian steppe will be able to supply us with armored vehicles, however. We know that with time and other methods of procurement, these will come to us. After all, the motherland is dependent on it, Za Rodinu, in which we will do industries of war. Modern war is like no war ever seen before. Men and soldiers are no longer the most important force on the battlefield. It is a huge amount of machines that dominate these beasts that fly or roll. These jet fighters, these main battle tanks, these are what will win us a day. There is no hope in the world for an army that is not equipped with them or at least equipped at the time. These machines do not come from nowhere. They are not as easily replaceable as the soldiers. No, they require a vast industrial infrastructure to maintain them. Our goal is simple. The attainment and utmost use of this infrastructure to maintain a modern force for the motherland followed with air cavalry divisions. Actually, description machines might not be too bad either. Uh, even though, I guess, Red Spring, huh? Okay, so when did we get this? Uh, this wasn't here last time. When I reloaded the save, you know, to start recording again, this was not here. What? Okay, well, that is... That is different. That is extremely weird, but... Okay, well, whatever. I was going to keep going down this way, but... Um, let's keep going that way. Let's do this one, then. Red Spring would be very good, just because it gives us more, uh... Uh, political power and organization, war sports and stability, so. No longer shall the People's Revolutionary Council lies an unremarkable collection of scattered brigades and divisions in the Altai Mountains. Surrounded by hostile warlords on one side and a dangerous Japanese satellite to the other, we must always keep an eye out for the threats and armies gathering on our border. But expansion to elsewhere in central Siberia has been unanimously agreed to by the Russian Mongolian generals alike. Thus, crossing the mountain passes that we have used as our defenses for so long, the wars of reunification will begin from a candidate that for many people might consider unlikely. We must prove them wrong. It is time for the soldiers of the Red Army to return to their homelands in the most obvious way possible by fighting their way there. Also, we do have some comments to go through, but with that one done, well, Roshia is dead, so... Uh, I don't think there's anything we can do about this. If you want to do about that, please go right ahead, as well as march to Roshia, so... Uh, we need to do this, we need to own this place. Persecute the Believers... Um, I don't know about that, but we'll probably end with Anarchy. I don't want to go to war with anyone yet. I would like to, but these people probably will go to war with us soon, just because I don't know when they're going to go to war with us. Look to our roots. Temporary Respite. Three Giants. Uh, they're still doing other stuff here. Hmm. Uh, Kamarovo? Reunion in Krasnoyarsk. I'm not sure when they're going to do stuff. Andriv? A king? Strike down the remnant, so... I don't know. I want to go to war with people as fast as possible, but... We didn't do that well against the Black Army last time, so... This is really not looking good for us, but we're going to get more attack this time. Cool. And what else do we have here? Finish army modernization? Probably not. Uh, what else do we have? We don't need to see this one because we can't do that one yet. Against Irkutsk? Nah, probably not. Legacy of the Siberian plan would be quite good. We can do this one. Get some more consumer goods, and that will be not really needed for now. Well, I do want to go to war. Spirit of the Red Army. Modernize the army. Army modernization would be good. Maintaining a professional army would be very... Oh, there goes Kamarovo and Krasnoyarsk. Um, this one would be very good to get as well. Get more political power, organization, war sport, output. Like, all that stuff is super necessary. I think we should go that way. Air Cavalry Divisions. For millennia, it's been the horse that has dominated the steppe, as the horse was the fastest way of getting a man from point A to point B that anyone knew. But that fact has changed, and now there's only one faster way, a better way, a more effective way to make use of mobility in the strain the helicopter. We must reorganize our divisions of old horses with their modern counterparts. By using the helicopter to modernize our forces, we believe we will have a distinct advantage over any other force near us. Its ability to quickly transport forces over vast distances will allow us to orchestrate surrounding maneuvers and dominate this step. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Camera is going against us and the future in central Siberia. With their immediate issues resolved, it's time we begin our crusade for reunification of Russia. While the native Mongolian population may not be happy, the spreading of socialism and rebirth of the motherland is much more important. The native Mongolians will have to wait for more development now we go to war. Starting with central Siberia, it will provide an ample base of operations with its large amount of manpower and industrial base. We will have many strong foes to face, but this time the Red Army will triumph. The Mongolian threat is ended, it's time to bring the Red Army home. The Red Army marches forward and Kemerovo wants to kill us off. That's not good. Just in case... Uh, what, are th what are these guys doing? Temporary military governors. Um, our place in nature... Uh, well, it looks like they're probably just going to go straight to war with us. That sucks. Yeah, they they're going to go straight to war with us. Okay, then. Um, they immediately start attacking us, which is not good. I did 
Uh, let's see. What did I do off screen? I did like try to raise these division strength a little bit. Our guys are looking so god awful though. So I did make these guys 20 combat with. So we'll see what happens. But we don't have a lot of guns. Head on up here too, because uh, moving up here is really not good because we get attrition. I hate seeing this. I wish we could close this out. We just got 11 more guys. Not bad. Hey, but at least we're holding. Hey, we're holding. That's good. That's actually good. Uh, the Rona Conference ends, I guess, as well. I want to scavenge before more loot, but we cannot. And we're at 92%, which is pretty decent. Over here, Air Assault. Eh, that's okay. Um, overall, I'm going to get more defense. Screw that. Get defense. We held out. That's good. That's good. How, how strong is uh, Kemerovo, maybe? Kemerovo, you have... Oh, my God. That's a lot of manpower. That's... Oh, God. I wish I had that much manpower, but we have none. Urgh. Yeah. Doing this stuff would not be very smart right now, so... Spearhead the Red Army, or the Red Army. What few tanks or armies have are old, decrepit, and we have so few spare parts that a hard hit with a hammer could mean the effective destruction of the tank. If these are truly going to be the vanguard of a revolutionary front, we will have to undergo extensive modernizations. The inclusion or inclusion of a strong, modern, well-equipped tank force in the People's Revolutionary Council's Red Army would put us above the poorly armed factions of the reactionaries, traitors, and puppets that surround us. Their, new, their infantry would have no answer to a fleet of mechan mechanical Atlantic ships swarming over the steppe in the Iron Wave. The revolution yet unfinished will see its glory realized from the tip of a 105 millimeter cannon on the front of a steel beast. And since we're here, we're just going to go ahead and read this one too. Modernize the army. Much of our army, while well, trained and well organized, still utilizes outdated equipment. This equipment must be replaced if we're to be of any relevance in regional affairs. The armies of our foes to the east are weakly and armed, weakly armed with Japanese surplus, spare the Japanese themselves. Those to our north use equipment from some grandfathers, which they use to fight the losing war during the Great Patriotic War. A modern army will have no equals in the tundra or in the steppe. We will be the dominant local force. This modernization will bring a red army back to its former height as the strongest, most motivated of our modern forces. There's no way towards a liberated Russia or liberated Mongolia at that without a modern army capable of bringing that dream to fruition. Awesome. Uh, anything else we can do here? Not really too much that I care about. I do want to do... Ooh, these are really good to do, but we can do stuff here as well, but I don't really care. I just want to empower the civilians as much as possible, which actually increase civilian power. That wouldn't be too bad. We do... Ooh, when selected, greatly decrease civilian loyalty, though. Ooh. Civilian power would be nice. And they're not decaying anything here, so... Agricultural society bonus is going up by quite a bit, which is awesome. Uh, a couple comments, though. Uh, let's see. Why did I not do the... Uh, when I not load back, so we, okay, let me explain this a little bit better. My apologies for my mispronunciations and my stammering. Um, yesterday, we went to war with Meng Jiang, or they went to war with us. And I did the peace deal where we basically had a white truce. There was an option for us to basically peace out with us conceding defeat. There might have been another one in which we forced them to concede defeat to us. So I could have maybe reload and redone the war here, but I wasn't really thinking about it. So my apologies. However, this leads me into the next comment, which will address what I want to ultimately say. Someone says we should do the Mongolian side and, you know, make the Mongolian faction dominant here in the People's Revolutionary Council. And someone also asked, why am I so mean to Mongolians? It's just because I, we can be, I guess, for now. Um, with most of the warlords in TNO in Russia, there's at least two paths, usually, for any nation. And because of that, I want to play as the PRC again sometime. So whenever we play as a PRC again, we will play as a Mongolians and have a Mongolian dominant faction that is emphasizing the military in the future. So please remind me when I come back to the PRC to, to do Mongolia and actually beat the crap out of Meng Jiang when we get there. So please remind me. So that's just, these are my thoughts because there's so many different paths for different nations in TNO in Russia. Or even just any other nation really. So that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Um, construction speed, I kind of don't mind that. Capacity... Yeah, I kind of want more IC. Uh, what do we have right now? Uh, construction speed is good. Consumer goods factors is pretty good as well. Factory output is 0 0.07, which isn't terrible. Um, hmm. I kind of want to see what civilian power does, though. So if we do that. So we're 92% loyalty. If we do this, it goes down by 6%, and it's a 50%, so 50% and something more. Hopefully we can keep holding here. Actually, who's our general? Oh, he's actually not too bad. This guy's actually not too bad either, so if we keep holding, we should do okay. I just don't trust anybody here. I really don't. Harvest of Industry, Return to the Mines. Yeah, go stay... Th okay, no, so basically going in that direction. Okay. I was kind of expecting these guys to go to war with us, but... Okay. Wait. Oh, wait. Yeah. Huh. Oh, hello. What happened to, what happened to these guys? Well, if they're, if they're busy, then Novos Beers shouldn't be attacking us, right? Right? Pile a whole bunch more guys in here, so then we can start attacking immediately back. 
Black market trading increases. That kind of sucks. Oh, yes. Please, scavenge for loot. Yes. And we need to save some PP to uh, do stuff here, too. Can you guys actually win, maybe? That'd be pretty nice if we could. Come on. They're not lo looking too strong, but we still might do okay here. Come on, helicopters. You're a little disappointing just because I wish you'd attack a little harder. But they're not that disappointing since they're only, what, six combat with? So it's not great, but whatever. Modernize the army. Nice. Go, 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 go. Choppers are slowly getting in there. Go, go, go. We've got him on the run. Oh, there there goes the chopper. Yeah, baby. Go, go, go. Oh, you couldn't get in there in time. Arr. Get those IFVs. Do we need to take every single tile that they have? That'd be kind of extreme. Oh, Kimrovo's up there. Okay, that's fine. Nice. They're surrounded. Keep them surrounded. Get those horses in there. Help them out. Help them out. If we can core this, that would be great. Take out that god dang motorized piece of garbage. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, our guys look so bad, my gosh. Um, pile drive everyone to... Which one's Kimmerobo? Is that one Kimmerobo? I can't tell. Oh, there you go. Let's go! Pile drive, pile drive, pile drive, and we could do this one. But I don't want to lose attacking defense, so we're going to go with maintain professional army. An army of professional volunteers and well-trained conscripts is an army that will always fight to the best of its ability. In Asia and the lands of Siberia and Russia, there exists a dearth of these professional armies. Possessing one will give us a huge advantage in the ways of making war. To our east stands a mercenary and conscript armies of Japanese Mongolia, only getting help from the Japanese in their dire situations. To our north and west, the squabbling reactionary warlords call at each other to focus on the petty enemies to plan beyond. A professional army will make quick worth, quick worth of quick work of these enemies. As we venture back to our native lands, the well-trained professional troops of our front shall lead the way. Please, come on, go, 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 go! Uh, we've lost, we've lost, a, well, they've lost a lot more guys, wow, 25, Jesus. Plays, plays Jesus, plays Jesus, pray Jesus, praise Jesus, I don't know, some P word in Jesus. Go, 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 do not let them in, do not let them through, do not give them any sort of, you know, hospitality. Oh, we just do, uh, equipment. Because right now, with the whole civilian thing... We're boosting the crud out of our agriculture, right? Or maybe not. Maybe not anymore. Actually, what is it? So it was... Oh, because it went up by four. That goes down by six. It goes up by four. Eh, that's okay. Not great. If that's the case... Oh, wait. Oh, oh you you have to do it like this. How are we losing? Okay, so if you're going to lose, then don't. Don't suck. Please just don't suck. Separate yourselves. Um, That really sucks. Our guys just suck so hard. Ah. Uh. Well, at least we did that one. Aggressive Doctrine. We need to get more attack and speed and infantry attack. And we lose defense, or we get more defense, lose attack and attack. Uh, if we're going to lose stuff, I'm going to lose just... I want to get more benefits than negative. So, Aggressive Doctrine. An old saying goes, the best defense is a strong offense. It is this key idea that we will use as a compass navigating the complex political situation we find ourselves in, in the Siberian and Mongolian theaters. We most always keep the enemy on the back foot. Giving them enough time to react will surely see our less industrially strong and significantly less well equipped army defeated in battle. Our new main enemies, the Japanese, outdo us in every category. Their army is larger, their tanks are newer, their planes are faster, and their puppets are numerous. But in any possible winning scenario, we must have one key advantage, the element of surprise. We must always prepare to use this, for it is our only hope. Nice. Oh, I don't care about this for now. Siberian plan time? Yes, please. Get more output. Cool. And they're not going to attack us, probably, so maybe cut you guys down in half. And go right there. Bait him into attacking us, maybe. Let's see what we can do. Because if they want to bait into attacking us, that's fine with me. Maybe not. Well, there goes Hitler. Goodbye, Hitler. Alright, so they're not going to even attack us then? Come on. Are you kidding me? Do we have any planes? We oh, hopefully we have some planes, right? Oh, no, everybody's got... <clears throat> There's literally nothing we can do about this. This is stupid. Oh, uh, Prince Strike is nice. That's good. And so we got that one done. Let's grab some of that, maybe. What else can we do? Anything else? We need to keep our pee-pee. I don't think we can win here. 82. Oh, maybe. It's maybe. I don't want to do force attack because that will literally kill off our divisions. And the game is lagging so hard to release the German successor states. Hitler's Germany. And so it begins. Come on. Why can't we do well here? Jesus Christ. Eve, do something then. You stupid pieces of garbage over here. Oh, this is so annoying. They go to war with us, and they're like, Sorry, we don't want to actually attack you. That is annoying as all heck. There you go. Leave. 
you just have to bait him into attacking him. Look how, look how weak our divisions are. This is ridiculous. Ugh. And then, decryption machines. We got work to do as well. Even if we do not in the foreseeable future, or possess military equipment to parallel the Japanese in quality or numbers, we may have an advantage, even when potent in a future war we would wish to fight. What for? What if? For every move the Japanese made, every soldier they deployed, every operation they planned, we were just as aware as the soldiers commanded. This would be a most valuable addition to our arsenal, one that would give us the edge in any fight we came across. It would even be more useful against our Russian foes who hold our motherland hostage. As the communication tech is far less advanced, the encryption machines and their purchase must begin, along with the creation of an advanced core of radio operators who will be able to function these machines. Come on, come attack us. You guys wanted to attack us. We only literally have two divisions down here. Oh my god, it's lagging so hard. What the heck is going on? That must be South Africa or something. Seriously, attack us, you pieces of garbage. This is so dumb. Um, in the meantime, let's get some more stuff. AKs, okay, so let's grab some more land out of attack. We could probably really use that. I'm prepared just to leave this division because it's not doing anything for us. Game. Let's go. Let's go. English Civil War begins. Get rid, of, get rid of another infantry division, then. There you go. You want to attack us, but you don't really want to. Pathetic. We got two and two. Oh my god, stop lagging. If we do one and one, are they still going to attack us or not? You know what? I might just let them come back out this way. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. Screw it. Just do this. Let them come back out. Come back out. Let them take over the land, and then we take out Kumarovo. Alright, come on, South Africa. No one cares right now. Let him come in. Let him come in. That's fine with us. There you go. Wait, what? There you go. Okay, now we're going to try this. 1v1, you should be able to win right there, right? Ugh, let's hope this works. You've got to win. You have got to win. Come on. Yep, and there goes those guys. Work to do. We finished... With through hard work and a determination that what the whole Union couldn't do. Tame the Western Mongolian step. For that we must rejoice, but understand that a rejoice may be cut short. We're surrounded by cutthroat warlords, Japanese puppets, and barely reliable fellow Soviets. These advancements were not at the end. Only the means to the beginning of a most important process. We have begun looking in. It is now our turn to look out, yes. As we begin the process of turning our work into real change. The two camps that have begun to form come at us with differing ideas as to the future of the council. Are we to do what we've always planned to do and leave Mongolia or stay and build a new motherland in a new home? Regardless of the path the council takes, we know we have the, up the support of a grateful modernized nation behind us and the force of our strong armies. This is pathetic. I hate this so much. This is stupid. Just kill them off. Come on. Ah. But I'm not going to force attack. No way, man. You're not done. You're literally not done. Get the infantry in there. Keep attacking until they run out of organization. And then get the helicopters in there. That's the only hope we got right now, so. <laughs> Good. Oh, it, it's turning a little brighter for us. A little brighter. Maybe through all my complaining, we will win. Maybe. My apologies for my raging earlier. Oh, you guys got to go and 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 We're getting close. Our divisions are just beating the heckin' back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we captured it! Oh, please tell me that's it. Please tell me that's it. Oh, that's it. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Oh, I apologize, guys. This is this is this is not easy. I don't know if I'd recommend anyone playing this nation. I'll be honest. This is not easy. This is looking very disgusting, though. For two months. Oh my God, two months. Are you kidding me? That's so long. That's so long. Uh, let's go and do this one. Uh, and then, uh, uh, we have no militia, huh? Uh, six suppression, four infantry battalions, four elite. Yeah, I'll do that one. That takes less equipment. Hey, look, we got some map bar. We have just a map bar. Okay, that's good. This is disgusting. Um, uh, I don't know. Do we? How many divisions do they have? Seven. Oh, seven thousand manpower. They have up to eight divisions now. Okay. Um, these guys are killing each other. I don't know if it's worth going to war with them. Decide our future. Uh, restore order. That might be really good. The Black Army has been a consequence of this destructive Siberian War as a backlash against the Supreme Soviet of Yagoda. Their belief, to our knowledge, being different from anywhere else in Russia is militarized anarchism, where the communes enjoy their freedom, but the disadvantages and chaos of the system are compensated through a powerful army. As much as the Council appreciates freedom, we cannot let this radically different group or system of government, or rather the lack of it, continue in Tulun and its surroundings. It is time to put an end to the Black Army by invading it from the bases and Tuval using a strong military offensive. We're just not really ready for anything here. Our soldiers are just 
Oh, God. Please don't kill me off, Central Siberian Republic. Whoa, we lost our other guys. Um, empower the civilian group. This really sucks having no stability. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Please, core this. How many people live here, actually? Uh, Give this to the Cicerone. It's not cord. Revoke. Oh, well, we can't do that yet, so. God, I hope we can do okay here. I hope we can do okay. This is probably a bad idea. Hope we got some more equipment from these guys, but Jesus Christ, this is not easy. Our guys look so bad. <laughs> oh, man, why? Ah. Please score stuff fa faster, faster, faster. No worker concessions here. Consumer goods need to go better. Yeah, we're all out of coffee. All right, after that one, I guess. Restore order. Do that one. We'll do the cider future. As our nation stumbles into modernity and our army gears itself for one last move into the dark, we face a final choice. The, uh, <clears throat> the Mongolians and our, the Russians share uneasy d dominion over our Politburo and army respectively. You mutually distrustful but with no other option than the collaboration. This is no longer the case. We must decide once and for all who will lead the fledgling nation. Will the Soviet we are building be Russia dominated or oriented towards retaking the past? Or will the Mongolian one oriented towards the future and the steps? History faces this. We must answer it with a save of the game because just in case this goes poorly, I'm going to save it. Because look how weak our guys are. This is so bad. We might actually have to pull back to the river here, actually. Oh boy. Oh boy. Not bueno. Not bueno. Please core this faster then. Two months. Man. It was despotist here. Or authoritarian democrat? It's hard to tell sometimes. Ah, Nikitin. Alright. We go to war with them. It says we can win, but I know they're lying. I know the game is lying from that about that, so. Let's head a future. <sighs> could you guys actually go there? No. I doubt you guys could actually do well here, could you? Oh, oh, hold on. That's green. Why is it Um That looks about twenty combat width, potentially. With engineers and artillery? How are we doing so well? Uh, uh you know what? I'm not gonna question it. I'm not gonna question it. Nope. I want you guys. Uh, where is the tile here? Go right there. And circle that one division, please. Oh, God, please, 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 please. Okay, then. Oh, happy 1964, everyone. Not looking too bad. It could be a lot, lot worse right now. You should go in there very quickly. For now, just... Oh, defend for now. That'll be good. That'll be very good. Don't lose, or at least, at the very least, kill this division off as fast as possible. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, we got him. You can retreat. You can retreat. Okay, go ahead. That's alright. And now they're attacking over here, too, which is not very good for us. Uh, they're still attacking us, too, so we gotta be careful with all of our lack of equipment. Can you please stop attacking us, guys? Please, stop attacking us. Get in there, too. We don't have that many choppers, do we? No, we do not. Radical changes. Balances of power are rarely upset with ease. Governments derive their stability from entrenched dynamics that take time and effort to change, even in the best of times. So it was for a Svobodny Presidium. Although many stood defined against the generals, few could agree on what would fill the void left in their absence. The Mongolian-dominated civilian legislature struggled in vain to push their military counterpart into reform, and the Russian military apparatus contended with itself over the old questions of reform and orthodoxy. Neither was strong enough to push the other out, nor weak enough to be shattered entirely by intrigue or effort. So it seemed the balance that defined the people's revolution Revolutionary Council would stay as unchanging as the mountains, and yet, even these mountains can tremble and the seas give way to forces greater than those which gave them birth. The Extraordinary Congress, as it will be subsequently known, begins with Sergei Korolev. The firebrand technocrat has never hidden his disgust for the unstable state of the presidium or his beliefs regarding the poor condition of the people's Revolutionary Council's scientific and engineering facilities, but in a well-publicized speech to the presidium, he focuses his attacks on the politicians behind them both. In incendiary tones, he accuses Russian and Mongolian factional leaders of guiding the country to destruction by their failure to commit to Mongolia or Russia. Russia. He, in fact, it is hard to tell if, it is, if there is anything he does not call them as, as the speech grows ever more intense, their mothers and wives. The effect, as surely must have been intended, has been to destroy the semblance of unity between the president's factions. As order collapses in the government, the senior counselors are faced with a choice, side of the Russian military or the Mongolian people. The Russians will march us forward. Which is weird to see, because we just saw that the, the Russians were dominant, so, okay, well, whatever. Well, if we can do well here, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly take, you know, doing well. Well, I guess not. We suck. We really suck. So, hold. Screw it. Don't even attack, guys. Just be in defense for now. I 
Uh, do we have any more things here? No, he's level 4. He's really good on attack. Defense, not so much, but, you know, that can change with time. Um, anything else here? 78. We could do stuff there as well, but we want to maybe wait a little bit. I'm just waiting for us to core the Camarobo, or whatever this was. Yeah, let's, let's do one of these. Maximum efficiency? What's that one? Um, that's not looking too good here. now, is it? Actually, that could be a lot, lot worse. Let's go down here and do that. Just keep defending. Don't worry about attacking. Can the choppers move any slower? Probably. Oh, crap! What the heck? Well, you know what? This is why I did the autosave, and I'll be right back. Alright, everyone. So here we're at. Actually, we're back at war with these guys, because they went to war with us. And as you can see, <laughs> I'm trying to get our soldiers over here pretty quickly. We'll see what happens. Um, There's no guarantee that we'll do really that well, but... uh, You know what? Let them come on in. Oh, and also, uh, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. I already went ahead and did this side as well. It's just because I ran out of things to do, and I've just been collecting political power, so... Yeah, we're pretty much out of focuses to do, so we're going to collect a lot more political power by now. And we also have these things unlocked here to modernize mechanized equipment. We lose 10% division organization for a little bit more than a month. It's not really worth taking right now since we're at war anyways, so we'll see what happens. There's no guarantee for anything here, but other than that, not much has really happened at all, so... Hopefully we do okay, and actually for this one, maybe we'll go ahead and give it to the, the citizenry... Get 10 power, more loyalty? Why not? Actually, how does it affect us now? 70 and 87, not bad. Not bad. Let them come on in and let them suffer the consequences of doing that. And maybe we can encircle them. That'd be kind of nice, actually. That'd actually be really nice if we could encircle them. Oh, and there we go. Actually, hold, hold, hold first. Oh, look at our IVs. We're actually... Well, actually, these are actually only six combo with, I believe, so... Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Are they at war with us? Who are they at war with? Oh! Oh, that's actually really good! Holy crap! Oh, nice! Now they sent all their divisions our way, which is really bad for them, but hey, for us, we'll gladly accept this. You guys hold. You guys go right there if you can. And you go straight up north if possible. Come on, come on! I just want to circle these guys and have a good time doing so. Actually, are they still coming in? No, they're not. Oh, that's so good for us. Ooh... We might be able to beeline for Kansk. Maybe we can get to Kansk. Maybe. Maybe. I want to capitulate them as fast as possible. Oh, this is... It just... We got unlucky earlier, but... We got it! Great! Oh, that worked out... That actually worked out way too well for us. Look at this... Oh my god, our borders are so disgusting. Holy crap. I can't believe that actually worked. You know, honestly, playing in... I'll be honest, like, this is like my fourth attempt doing this off-screen. Um, it just... Holy crap. Sometimes you just get so unlucky with, like, what we have. But, hey, you know what? Nova Subirsk died. The CSR went to war with these guys. I'm going to take that and run with it. Uh, crush the communists? Let's restore order. The anarchist army to our north has finally been brought under our heel. Bar a few holdouts and bandits, something typical for this country nowadays. Still, we hold all strategic points that matter. The cities, railways, and roads, and that can be enough to assert our control. The council began a program of systematic stabilization and cracking down on enemies of the state. And with the passage of time, the noose we've tied around the conquered territories will make sure that they are properly integrated and stabilized. Only once that is done, we can continue the long road towards reunification. Not bad. And let's go and integrate them. Great. Even though, I guess we could begin a raid for these guys, but... Um, these guys would definitely want to kill us off. And that's not a good thing for us. I do want to get more loot as well, but hey, we got more military factories. Oh god, we need way more guns for this. We need way more for this. Uh, quite a bit more for this as well. Anything else here? So, oh look at, actually, we're taking out our enemies. We actually got a lot of IFVs. Not bad. We, helicopters, we need way more helicopters too. Oh wait, hold on. How are our helicopters doing? Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, so, one of the problems in TNO that I've noticed is that when you're using divisions, they don't replenish helicopters sometimes. It happens with America, it happens sometimes, I think, with uh, Reichskommissariat Central Africa. Like, for some reason, it's bugged or something that you can't get your helicopters to actually go in and reinforce your divisions, which makes literally no sense. Since these guys should be the early choppers, the transport choppers. Hel heli actually, yeah, I mean, I guess technically these are transport as well, but really we need this one. So I guess technically we do need that, but... I don't know. It doesn't make sense sometimes. Yeah, this is not going to go well. We're going to get encircled pretty darn easily here. Um, if that's the case, let them come on in, maybe. Hmm. Let them waste their own manpower. Let's do something like this. There you go. Something like that would probably ultimately be better for us. Scavenge for loot, because we do... Let's at least get one more done there. That'd be good. We actually have some manpower, finally. Thank goodness. Oh, my gosh. 
Yeah, let's get some transport helicopters next. Or store order, and then crush the communes. The concept of the communes as separate settlements in the sparse lands of Siberia that maintain their control over themselves in a democratic fashion is one of the deep roots of the ideology of anarchism and the Siberian Black Army. With the ultimate defeat of them, the communes will must be crushed as well. The process of eliminating the sentiment of local power and autonomy is simple, and it is to take this power away from them. The systems used by the anarchists will end, and a typical socialist administration will be imposed, just as in the rest of the council's territories, of course. The Red Army will be present in every step of the process to ensure it goes smoothly and with no problems whatsoever. Followed up with the Northern Populists or Rurik's Mattress. Well, we don't own some of these, so uh, I, these will all be bypassed. So if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Strike across Noyars doesn't exist, so if you like to read about this one as well, please go ahead as well. So these two will all be bypassed, which would be very, very good. Let's just go and get this stuff done. 223 days. Oh my goodness, that's so long. That is incredibly long. Uh, these guys will probably go to war with us eventually. Eh, rubber, I'll kind of wait for that. Not terrible. Not too bad then. Maybe one a month, maybe. Oh, I guess really three a month, technically, but still. Oh, we're looking pretty good there. There you go. Keep it at two. We'll see what happens with these guys. Because for us... Wow! Look at that! We After defeating them, we actually got some equipment back. Nice! Transport helicopters. Oh, see, it also auto-bypassed, so... Oh, this auto-bypassed, too. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. As well as dismantle the kingdom. The royal family's fate. Integrate the crown lands. After amnesty. Destroy the military remnants. Uh, we'll probably after amnesty for this one. Uh, we don't own it, so if you want to read about that one, please go ahead. Actually, if you want to read both, please go ahead, so... I think it should auto-bypass. Yes, it will. And this should auto-bypass as well, maybe? Will it auto-bypass? Do we own this place? No, it doesn't. Okay, so we can read that one first. Prepare troops. Actually, that would have been really good to do, but when General Krylov, having finally broke after seeing the troubles Russia and himself suffered for so long, declared himself as Rurik II, his family followed him. Krylov's wife, as well as his children, had faith in his endeavors and lived in comfort in Kemerovo for years. These comforts funded by the loot of Rurik's army currently. They are no longer the relatives of the great ruler of the city, for he is king no more, and we must make up our minds on what we shall do with him. The options are simple. We could force him into exile, sending them outside of our controlled territories and setting them free, or we could do with what some of our generals think is best, and follow the footsteps of the first Bolshevik revolution in 1918, that is to simply execute them. Burning the black banners. It was a quiet walk, under which the circumstances was a pleasant surprise for Private Ivanovich. The teenagers he was hurting seemed no less touchy without their signature rifles. Apparently, the black army had been paying its members in angst. One of them, a boy no more than 16, struck his tongue out at the minder, murmuring a curse word like a school kid denied his milk. Jesus, how had, they, how had the army survived long enough to surrender to Kreisel? A Kreisel. Ivanovich noticed the swaying branches, diffused moonlight spreading throughout the gaps of the tree line. A stiff, stifled giggle to his left, and he swiveled on instinct to a girl playing shadow puppets with a younger girl, perhaps a sister or family friend. The child burbled, grasping at the hands of the laughing, laughing elder. Ivanovich had lost his mother at a young age. He lacked the vocabulary to describe the precise hollowness that shook his heart. Just as a man born blind cannot describe color, even so, it was there, like a quiet punch of the gut that kept on punching. Here and there, a ragged chant arose, a song of children in all times and places, a song with no real meaning in all the meaning in the world. Ivanovich stayed stiffly silent, checking the bushes for telltale gun barrels, and gently swaying in the night breeze, just like a route march, he told himself. This was just like a route march. A nudge in his side, and Ivanovich jerked awake, a boy half his age, ten at most, stretched his palm towards him, and his hand was a small ball, the boy mimed, putting it in his mouth, and Ivanovich followed, almost immediately regretting him. Thoughts of poison, however, were almost immediately dispelled, herbal sweetness filled his mouth, some kind of supplement, perhaps? Reaching uh, to thank the boy, Ivanovich was met with the first smile he'd seen in weeks, the first since he'd walked into the darn territory of the Siberian Black Army. Tears filled his eyes, and a gentle warmth suffused the moonlight air, or moonlit, moon, moonlit air, still beautiful in that brimless night. Private Ivanovich was feeling human for the first time, at least for a while. We can still raid a coup, so maybe we'll do that one soon, but, uh, culture. I know I'm ignoring some stuff here, but whatever. Um, we don't have that much here, so what do we have up here as well? I don't want to empower the the civilian power. Uh, civilian power is a little bit lower. And army loyalty is actually lower than civilian loyalty. Huh. Alright, we'll do this one again, get more civilian loyalty. And might as well, why not? The family first, and uh, border fortifications? Integrate the crown lands? Probably. What other generals found impossible to do in this chaos of central Siberia? We have accomplished. The fiefdom of General Karailov has fallen, and the treacherous madman is under our custody. In the town of Kemerovo, one can see the troops of the council patrolling every major street to maintain order and hunt down any remaining bandits and insurgents. This process continues, but if we want to ensure good life for the people of our occupied territories, martial law cannot last long. By extending our administration to these lands and pacifying them, they can become integral parts of our state and allow us to continue our quest to reunify Siberia. Not a bad idea. Idea. And a part of the civilian faction, probably. What else can we do here? Oh, we can do this stuff up here, too. So we're probably not going to go to war yet. And we have a lot of command power. Modernize. 
I do want to maximize helicopter stuff, so infantry weapons would be good as well. But let's do helicopter investments. And I do want more attack and defense, so boom, boom. Thank you. And uh, there you go. The fate of the House of Rook. Judge Anton looked quizzically at the sorry sight. A whole family of disheveled half-corpses, their faces paled and scarred by conflict, and yet all distinctly similar. The man clung to what must have once been royal robes, their finger finery now fouled and dripping with dew. Anton could hardly restrain himself from ordering a recess to chase these refugees away from the courthouse, according to the papers he had in front of them. These sorry folks were all that was left of the rulers of Kemerovo, and they were to be accorded as much dignity as could be conferred. Anton slapped his podium, calling the court to order. A list of charges was brought before the king, who had been dragged to his position by struggling guards, and the jury giggled. As if watching a cabaret, and scattered applause arose when he demanded to speak. Those giggles died as Zurich began to speak, not in the tones of a madman or a court jester, but in the reasoned tones of an officer or bureaucrat. Rurik now spoke of the need of Russia for the guidance of an enlightened despot, and waved his fists in airy sweeps as he pointed to where armed forces had gotten the Revolutionary Council. Here and there he lowered his tones to speak as if to individual members of the crowd, almost seductive in its intensity, and then he raised his voice in a theatrical crescendo. The waves and troughs of emotion swept the jury, awestruck as if they had been seen to the gold-flecked bottom of a muddy pool as Rurik bowed. His speech concluded, they cheered. Anton, in his mounting confusion and dismay, called for a halt to proceedings. Rurik might have been a madman, but it was clear that he was far from harmless, and he did discussion with the Red Army officers. Anton decided a new way forward was needed. Jay will be no longer be sufficient for the man who would be king. Have his head, it's natural for kings. Just kick him out of the country. Uh, I like this one better, having his head, but you know what? We're civilian. We're not really focused on the military. I want to be a little bit more peaceful, so. And for this stuff, um, organization regain. Honestly, that seems a little bit better to us. The division training time is, a, is okay, but this one. Thank you. Not bad. Not too shabby. And we do want to power the civilian faction a little bit more. I wonder when the, uh, the other guys are going to attack us, but border fortifications. All right, now let's do prepare our troops first. Oh, what happened here? Ah, Himmler, who cares? Prepare our troops. A great step forward in achieving the reclamation of central Siberia has been completed, and we must prepare for the next outbursts of action against the giants we now have to face. Our army, while it is clearly well-equipped and trained, will have to be prepared for a new environment and a new method of warfare, that of more expansive and more intense battles. New manuals, military exercises, and war games are being prepared by the Council's High Command, solely for the purpose of helping the army adjust to the new situation we find ourselves in. This effort must be encouraged if we want to excel on the battlefield when the battles start again. Absolutely. And I do apologize for talking fast, it just... It has to be what it has to be. Get some more organization, thank you. And you know what, screw it, just in case. If we're not going to be able to make any more divisions, do that one. Because these guys take transport helicopters, right? And... These guys are regarded as what? Transport helicopters. These are literal transport helicopters. Right? So... Hmm. I don't know. Reinforcement this doesn't always work, which is very weird. Anything else here? Not too much, no. Get some more anti-tank for now. And then get even more helicopters. And then maybe some, some more of these rifles, too. There you go. Cool. Alright. And empowers the civilian faction. Eventually. Oh, army loyalty is decaying by negative two. Not bad. Not bad at all. Agriculture societal development is going up by three. Not enough, but not too shabby. So when are these guys going to come try to kill us? Empower the faction? Hmm. Is it going down every month? Oh, that's not good. Whatever. And prepare troops. So, okay. Following effects of the armies for 75 days. Offense, breakthrough. Cannot retreat while defending. Well, actually, since we're waiting, any eh, it doesn't matter. I don't really care too much. Border fortifications. Great enemies from the anarchist army to the madmen of Kemerovo have fallen as... Uh, wait, what? What is going on? What the heck? As we continue to expand, a large swath of land stretching across Siberia is now occupied by the People's Revolutionary Council, as opposed to what little ground we used to hold before we began our path of liberation. As we expand, though, we must also consider defensive maneuvers. Specifically, much of the High Command stated they wish for the construction of fortifications along our western frontier where we face the biggest threats and where preparations for war are absolutely needed. This defensive line will be of good use for a limited military budget, where we will be able to safely keep our lands with no unnecessary sacrifices of men required. The best engineers and military experts will thus be given the task of completing this construction for the good of the council. We could scavenge for loot. We could still beat people up if we really wanted to. I just don't trust Irkutsk. Kind of like him, actually. Our so I just don't trust our soldiers, too, so I'm going to be honest here. I don't trust these guys at all. I really don't. How strong are their soldiers? Can we see how many boys they have? I mean, it's... Don't want to lose anything here. Yeah, I'll do it anyways. Why not? Screw it. And then they're going to attack us, probably. 
Probably. The final fight. It is time to give everything we have in the final phase of defeating our regional enemies, the last remnant of the Central Siberian Republic that must be erased at all costs. The People's Revolutionary Council has proven itself to be the strongest competitor in the region, defeating anyone who has stood in its way. Only one last push remains to be made, and that is a great attack westwards. Using the power we have accumulated from our previous conquests, the thrust will have to be supported by everything we have at our disposal. It is our hope that in the streets of Tomsk and Novosibirsk, the people will soon have a chance to come out and celebrate their liberation, proudly waving the flag of the Council. Our military, from its troubled beginnings and its struggle for survival, is now the greatest tool we have for the liberation of the people, and the next phase of this liberation begins now. Are we ready to go? Uh, pretty much. Uh, we are looking very good equipment. Just defeat our enemies, and we can steal all that equipment. They paid the tribute! Wow! And there goes Kennedy. That actually worked this time. Nice. And back on the line. Are you... What? What? Wait, what the heck is that about? Oh, what? Okay, so they just go to war with us, huh? They have only nine divisions, but still. What the heck? That's BS. We don't even get a modifier. Like, when off screen, like, while well, I was just playing, waiting until we got, like, someone went to war with us, the central, the Siberian Black Army actually had a little icon here saying they were justifying on us. That is BS. What the heck? I swear, man, sometimes the game just doesn't tell you what's going on. It just is like, nope. Why don't they change to 5%? That's not bad. Um, anything else here that we really care about? Pursue favors? Um, looking pretty good already. Loyalty is kind of questionable for these guys. Power is not too bad. <sighs> I don't like that. But more consumer goods? Probably. Here's our stability, but whatever, right? Whatever. Go, go, go. That is beyond stupid. That is so stupid. It's not like, it's like the same thing in Old World Blue sometimes, where the AI just doesn't let you know that they're going to take you over. So, yeah, I think that's, that's just not cool, man. That's just not cool. But, because there's so much land here, take the helicopter, boys. Alright, now we can do this too. There we go. Hopefully we'll do okay here. Go straight on in if you can. And trust Noyarsk. That'd be nice. I guess you could probably just move up. That'd probably be very helpful. Get the horses in there too. I'll go there actually. There you go. Not sure why you guys wanted to attack us, but okay. These divisions suck. And you can't even edit them because you don't have any of uh, what we really need here. Oh, we can get us the citizenry. Yeah, might as well. There you go. There you go. Not too bad. What do we get from that? Anything else? And, you know what? What have we not done yet? Let's do research facilities. There we go. Cool. Um, Not bad. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. Civilian power and loyalty. That's really good. Maybe a little bit too good. Actually, let's go there first. Just so we don't have to deal with that. We capture the junction, at least. We get even more division speeds. Less supply consumption and construction speeds. Pretty good. That's pretty nice. Yeah. What's the point of even using these guys? They're just going to lose. Wait, can you not go straight there? Go, guys, go! Wait, what? Go, guys. What the heck? It's so hard to see the map sometimes. It really is. Let him come on in. See what happens. Oh, okay, so that's got him. I'm worry about that. Please go right ahead. Sabotage for supply lines. Uh, infiltrate their army. As well as hunt down Siberian faction. Crush an artist republic. The final fight. Good. Alright, so we got all that stuff done. Wow. Uh, overrun Tomsk. 20% more attack, spread, oh that's nice, spread political divisions. The divisions and rifts between the completing or competing political groups in Tomsk could easily be used to the council's advantage. The factions that strive or dominance are many and have inspiring names like humanists and bastilliards, but what we truly care about is exploiting them for our own progress or purposes. As we continue our invasion, penetrating deeper into Tomsk lands and defeating their armies, we can spark discontent and weariness in the internal affairs of our enemy. Using secret deals, bribes, and channels to influence them it is enough to stage protests or clashes or back anti-war sentiment to hopefully send the Democrats into a spiral of self-destruction. As they struggle to control the situation within their own zone, our campaign of liberation will be much easier. Hopefully. Yet hope so. We really need new planes, man. I'll be honest. We really need some new planes. Or so, choppers, not planes. Ugh. Choppers. Let them come on in. See what happens. Cool. 
Cool. No, no, no. Hold for now. What the heck? If you can't, how are you not able to beat this division? I swear to God. Like, this is annoying. This is, I'll be honest. Like, this is, this campaign is, like I said earlier, just, I don't know. It's, it's incredibly difficult. Playing the PRC is not easy. And I'm not sure if I'd really recommend anyone play this. It's just a little bit too difficult. Actually, you guys go there to keep them in place. Oh, hello. Wait, we overran a division? Oh, that's kind of nice. Do we actually overran somebody? Of the nine divisions, so. I guess we did. They did lose somebody, so that's pretty good. All right, well, we'll do it again here. After you hold, just support the attack. There you go. That's better. Not too bad. They might still... Ooh. You would go somewhere else. Yeah, you're not leaving. No, sir. Oh, they died. Good. Gods of the North. At least we wanted to beat them up this time. That'd be nice. Anything else? Better guns? Oh, can we do more stuff here, too? Oh, yes, please. Um, More attack. More defense. That's actually really good. Organization regain. Even more, please. No, we can't do anything here yet, but will give us some time. We'll get some more air assault stuff. That'd be nice. Go screw yourself, son. Give me back, Hamarobo. Nice. Spread political division, and then we're going to do over on Tomsk. Tomsk is not a densely populated warlord state, nor a heavily defended one, despite the power of the local militia that is amassed for its defense. In front of these disorganized militia units, our own army, the Far Eastern Military District, is much stronger. For that reason, despite the advantages that the enemy may have in its fields, such as industry, the Council's generals believe in a fast charge against Tomsk that will achieve their final elimination. By making your attack from all sides and overwhelming them with professional tactics, it is possible to overrun Tomsk and win this war within a surprisingly small amount of time. The plan of a quick victory is certainly ambitious, yet is within the realm of possibility, and we can implement it. Very good. Can we get more attack? No, we cannot yet. Darn it. Um, not bad. 100%. 100%. We get some more loyalty for the uh, these guys. Anything you do decreases civilian loyalty. That kind of sucks. Say favors from these guys? Uh, we could probably do that. That's actually probably worth it for right now. Yeah, 60%. I don't want to be too disloyal. That would not be very good. And we arrived. Cool. Give me back my stupid state. If we could just encircle them, please, that'd be really good. There you go. Come on. Hello. Hello. Keeps a BP too, that'd be good. Nice. Very nice. Keep doing it. Keep doing what we're doing. We're doing okay for now. Did we kill that division off? At this point, use helicopters to just overrun them. Yeah, even though these we, we have helicopters, just because we have helicopters means absolutely nothing. It means really pretty much nothing. Like, it, you can get extremely unlucky with enemy AI. So, like, yeah, you got helicopters. There's only six combat with. That sucks. Like, don't get me wrong. The speed's nice and all, but you can't reinforce them for some reason, so... Oh, go in. Everyone go in. I don't care at this point. Just kill them off, please. For the love of God, kill them off. Alright, so we got these guys surrounded, which is nice. But, helicopters are effective, but six combo with and they don't reinforce is just not worth it. Overrun Tomsk. Incorporate friendly elements. Purge them all. I like to purge them all, but we'll wait and see for that one. Keep them in place for now. You guys keep moving in right around. Keep moving in. Oh, we can do one more? Oh, cool. So let's do incorporate fairly and the elements. 
incorp incorpore friendly elements. Huh. The CSR, from its infancy to its isolation until its final demise, has been a diverse and vibrant democracy of the bourgeoisie. Liberals, conservatives, oligarchs, and more all played some role in the politics of the Siberian state, with varying popularity and clout as time went on. Perhaps we could use this to our advantage, since our contact with Tomsk has shown that there are, in fact, some political movements and organizations that lean to the left and are supportive of socialism. It would be prudent, in order to stabilize the lands far in the north, to approach these groups and make them an offer, which is to incorporate them into our government and utilize their support. If they accept, then things will be significantly easier for us, but if they refuse, they will have some the same fate as all other movements of Tomsk. And you know what? I feel like America right now, and Kaiserreich, because look at our uh, stability. It's very good. Look at that. That's just that's just garbage. Helicopters are garbage. These helicopters are so garbage. Oh, you're not going to cut these guys out. No, you're not. Captured airplane plant. Not bad. Yeah. I'd rather have, like, a 20 combo with division than these helicopters. I'd re I honestly would. It's not very good. It's straight up not very good, but it's done, and that, 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 this, 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 I don't know, this, this campaign, like, Amur was hard, this group is very difficult as well, like, <laughs> I gotta play factions that are a little bit easier, 28% is not bad though, and since we're not at war, we can probably get some more helicopter stuff maybe, oh, let's get some weapon stuff, we always use weapon stuff, right, cool, and get this, oh crap, that's not good too, oh, we get scavenged for loot, uh, I wanna beat people up too, but they don't have loot, so, uh, but yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know if I can really recommend anyone play this nation because it's so difficult. I guess at this point, since we take them out, you can probably just go train. Doesn't matter at this point. I'm probably just going to delete this division because it literally won't even reinforce. Look at that. Like, don't tell me that it's zero. It's literally not zero. We have a negative amount here because if you look over here, we're 90 out of 90, 24 out of 24, 450 out of 450. 34 out of 150. So, I'm not sure what the game is. The game is bugged. It's just bugged. So, uh, what's next? Oh, wait, can we not do Liberation Siberia? Oh, so we need to form the council. Okay, cool. After years of hard work, for motherland, Central Siberia has been unified. No longer will be divided between different generals, despots, and pop populace, squabbling over trivial matters and ideology, or simply over their own prestige. For the mountains of Tuva and Mongolia, the one true regime, the People's Revolutionary Council, has come to the rescue of this region that has troubled ever since the collapse of the Union, sweeping any enemies we find on our way northwards. Now, with the power of the remnants of the Red Army, Central Siberia is finally under one banner again. All that remains now is for the future final future Central Siberia to be decided by its leaders and the people. However, with dangerous enemies on our east and west, we will not stay idle. Now, I don't want to hurt this just because uh, I want to do this one more time. I think what we're going to do is give us a few days, and we're going to go ahead and do... not that one. Uh, oh, yeah, with this nation, we can't really do Legacy Siberian Plan as much as effectively as we normally like to, so let's go ahead and do whatever is the cheapest one here. Construction speed... Output is okay. I'll probably go with construction speed then. It hurts the consumer goods factories though, which is not great. Um, man, we take so long to get PP. So long. And bingo, bongo, bongo. Okay, cool, cool. Any resources? No, we're kind of okay. We're gonna go with. I don't want to lower that. Just we're gonna uh, get some more. Uh, I see. Won't matter eventually. Go construction speed. Screw it. Why not? And I'll finish this off with this. Raiding and looting, no. Reunification of Russia. Or at least the Central Siberian Revolutionary Council, so. Nice. Could socialism make a comeback? And now it's because of that. Let's stop training because now we're going to have to deal with a little revolt here. We got another research slot, which is great, finally. And it is not even 64 yet, so not too bad. Get some of that, and we shall do this focus right now. Great. And here we are, everyone. Now. We're going to read the one on the left, Socialism Our Way Alone, but if you'd like to read about American Supplies Arrive, as well as The Coming Storm, please go right ahead. This happens every time you unify Central Siberia, which I don't always unify, but if you like to read about them, please go right ahead. Spazibo Americanets. And Harrowing. Oh no, General Strikes. Oh no, and we, I forgot we're here too. Uh, let's not cut down military spending. What are we actually building up? Well, it doesn't look very good, but Socialism. Vasilevsky stood at the podium in front of the assembled masses, their lean faces filled with apprehension. The popular revolt of the workers had shaken the faith of the people in the government's commitment to the principles of socialism, and Vasilevsky was not deaf to the whisperings of discontent amongst even the most loyal of the proletariat. 
Such sentiments needed to change and fast. Sweat had begun to form on his scalp and be beaded it beneath his uniform. The heat of the lights bearing down on him, almost a relief on the Siberian cold. People of Russia and Mongolia, I come to you today not as a conqueror or warlord, but as a surgeon. Our new nation is held together by fragile stitches, patched together into a greater whole after decades of turmoil and separation. I come to you to beg for your forgiveness and understanding. We are no stranger to wars or rebellions. Indeed, revolt seems key to the Russian national character. This recent insurgency, waged in the name of socialism and the proletariat's will, did nothing but serve the will of its leaders. Naive workers were herded into battle lines and told to fight for an ideology that the leader held no faith in. The workers' revolt was a cancer upon socialism and an insult to the immortal science of Marx and Lenin that we hold so dear. It is unfortunate that many gullible souls die to serve the whims of their reactionary masters, but it was unnecessary to ensure that our nation heals, that our stitches remain intact. Russians, comrades, I ask that you forgive me and understand why we did what we did, for only through force and destruction of false ideologies can Russia be healed. History is written by the victors, and secure a position just so we can get through this quickly, and even though I'd love to do the military front. Interest rates on our debt will increase. Well, I'm doing that one last then. Hmm. Um, restoring our riches. Wait. Great patriotic legacy. Strategic theorem and combined operations. Um. Cool. Let's get combined operations. That would be nice to do. That's good to see. Uh, restoring our riches would be very good to do as well. Focus on their economy. Decrease consumer goods factors by 5%. We'll go to high taxes. Not sure if that's really good. International field. Into the modern age. I'll be honest. Like, there's... So there's some. There's not a lot, but there are some here that help improve societal development, but not as much as I would like, honestly, to see. Hmm. All right. Whatever. Secure position. After years of fighting, we've accomplished something that once seemed impossible. Our enemies lie vanquished, and the Red Army is now under... Now the uncontested mass of Central Siberia, with our external threats disposed of, we now have time of... of to turn inward and solidify our control. Though the squabbling strongmen and bourgeoisie liberals have been cast from their thrones, their supporters are still as numerous as they are dangerous. We must embark on a campaign of the regional consolidation and pacification. Another issue of even greater importance must be settled. With much of the old union now under our control once more, many in the administration are wondering whether the time for military rule is finally coming to an end. The question of a restored revolutionary civilian government must be answered soon before it has time to form fractures within our leadership so that, that they are too deep to repair. Good, good, good. Defenders of the Union keep the citizens happy while empowering the military. We have hope. We'll probably keep the military happy while empowering our citizenry for this one, so. Nice. Captain Philip, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Pardon them. Raise military loyalty. The eye wall. Um, I guess if you want to read this one too, please go right ahead as well. One of these places will become a demilitarized zone, which is fine with us. Don't really care too much. So we have that one unlocked finally. Get some better AKs for now. So, we should be able to, and also, I made 40 combo with divisions here, too, so. <clears throat> we got some serious big boys. Big one for now, and it looks like Krasnoyarsk will be the group. Can we add on more divisions here? Yes. It's going to cost a lot more, but that's okay with me. Cool. If that's the case, go do this, and one, two, three, four, six, eh, something like that, there you go. Not bad. And we only get .13 every day. Wow, that's pretty bad. New territories or the Krasnoyarsk Conference? Um, restoring our riches. Is there any way we can lower the administrative, overextended administration here? C Army civilian relationships not very good right now. Wow. But agricultural methods monthly change goes up quite a bit. We have general strikes, which is not good. We've where's the administration stuff? We saw a little bit on the right there earlier. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if I really like this. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens, but. I guess I'm just not used to it. I'll put it like that. I'm just not used to it like this. Yeah, it reduces strain. Usually, for at least some of these warlords, you're forced to do the administrative stuff over here first, but we'll do the Krasnoyarsk Conference. A conference has been called to settle the question of establishing a civilian government in Central Siberia. From across their territory, generals, bureaucrats, and loyal revolutionaries of all stripes are making their way to the city of Krasnoyarsk, where they will each represent their arguments and do their darndest to see their plans for the future of the Union enacted. For the most part, the bureaucrats are the strongest supporters of restoring civilian control, while the generals are in favor of maintaining their hold for a big time, or the being time being, though there are exceptions to this rule. Some of the administration side with the military, fearing that it's too early for the army to relinquish its emergency power safely, and a few generals have argued that the army would be much better and much more capable. Force, if it was not constantly occupied with running the state. All these matters will be settled in Krasnoyarsk. Call for uprising. If you like to hear about that, please go right ahead. Can you all just come down? Nope. Oh, more military factories? Nice. Uh, screw the IFEs. I hate these. I, I, they don't hate them. They're just not as good as tanks. Even though apparently in real life, like, we use them more often than anything else. Get some of that. Grab some of that, too. That'd be good. And the revolt. If you want to do about that, please go ahead. And here we go. 
Go straight on in and kill them all off. Actually, if we go there fast enough, we can just do quite well. Uh, go right there, guys. Cut them off. Kill these revolters. And they've been cut off. Nice. Look at that. They're not even reinforcing. I mean, the tank divisions are nice and all, but they're not... They're like six combat with. And I apologize for the Discord sounds. I Even when I mute Discord, it still pops up. There's something wrong with Discord, but whatever. New Capital Central Siberia. If you liked it about this, please go ahead. Novosibirsk, Krasnoyarsk, Kemerovo. Um, actually, I, I did want to comment about this, too. Like, we lose Western Mongolia as a core, which I don't understand why. Yeah, that was part of the last focus before we became uh, the Provisionary Central Siberian Revolutionary Council. So, I don't know why that happens. It just... I don't think I really agree with it, but it is what it is, I guess. I'm mean, guessing our core culture is not Mongolian, but still. Hmm. Uh, Novosibirsk, Kemerovo... Mm, Krasnoyarsk, well, they, they just rebelled, so no. Probably Novosibirsk. Let's do Novosibirsk. There we go. And they're gone. Not too bad. Of course, once you use 40 combo with infantry, it is not too much of an issue, so. Nice! Followed up with Defenders of the Union. Well, let's do. Make an offer. Okay, come on. Stop lagging so hard, please. Uh, I guess we'll do new territories. Against all odds, we've won the war against our rivals, and one step closer to reuniting Russia once more. But all future plans for national unification are useless. Even dangerous if we don't create the stability in our new territories. In order to do that, we'll have to deal with the former warlord holdouts in the region, the old bureauc bureaucracies that dealt with the day-to-day -day activities of the governments, and decide in the face of our old enemies in addition. We must deal with the workers' revolt, its origins, and how to avoid such an outcome in the future. Only by dealing with these problems now can we afford to look towards the horizon of a better, more prosperous future for Russia and her people. And I'll get a little bit more army XP too, which is not too bad too. Nice. A few days left, not bad. But yeah, I don't know. It feels like the PRC... Is still lacking. Like it, it needs a little bit more polish before you know we do it again sometime. Now, we'll do it again someday, but it just feels like I don't know. It's not 100% there yet. It's close, but not quite there yet. Not quite there. Yet. Planning the Krasnoyarsk Conference, with the state having now secured control over the entire region. It is now time to address the critical question of its future governance. Though we've operated under military government for many years, we no longer face the same challenges that we once did. Some issues have been resolved, while other large, far larger ones have surfaced. Of all these issues, the primary one involves how the state's administration should be organized. Many within the military believe that their administration should continue, albeit in a scaled-up manner, until such a time as the nation is fully reunified. Others, however, especially those from recently pacified lands with civilian administrations, have insisted that a civilian-led government is the only rational way forward, and they're supported by many figures within our own state organs. A civilian government, they argue, is the only institution that can adequately address the myriad domestic issues facing us, and would free up military attention for the campaigns to come besides. These arguments are, can no longer be ignored. We are therefore organizing a meeting of the Revolutionary Council to be held in Krasnoyarsk. In the near future, representatives of both civilian interests as well as the military will attend. There, this issue will be debated, and a conclusive answer will be reached as to how our state will move forward to the next stage of its existence. One way or another, this issue will be resolved, and answer will be decided upon, and will finish off with Constance, or Constance's legacy. Regardless of how you view it, the workers of the Central Siberia are in less than ideal circumstances, despite our best attempts. There are many workers who distrust us and our policies, believing us to be the enemies of the people and the workers of the world. This animosity, combined with easy access to firearms, led to the powder kick that was the workers' revolt, headed by one Vitaly Kostin and other leaders. Although defeated, Kostin and his revolt have made a major impact upon the workers of Siberia, widening their eyes to the possibility of overthrowing our government by force. We must deal with these rabble-rousers who would lead the workers of Russia down a dangerous road of defenselessness against fascists in the name of freedom and liberty. We all agree there's a problem, but how do we deal with this? But that's where we're going to end today's episode. If you enjoyed it, do please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will probably go to war, hopefully, with the Far East, and hopefully have a good time doing so. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.